Hello, my name is Carolyn Sykes and I would like to welcome you to your first introductory harp lesson, an introduction to the harp. So as you can see, I have a beautiful harp here. This is a Celtic harp. And the first thing that you might notice is that the strings are coloured. So if you look very closely, you'll see that I have red strings here and I have blue strings as well and then I have plain strings or white strings as we call them. So all the red strings actually have a significance. They're all C strings so they all sound the same. They're the same note. The C is the same note but uh, low C's and middle C's and high C's. The blue strings are all F's. And then I have a low string that's kind of a greeny blue color down here. And then the strings in between follow the letters of the alphabet. So if you were to count backwards from C, you would count C, B, A. So this is where you're going to start on the middle of the th group of three white strings. That's where your A is. And it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then it starts again at A. This is the next group of the three white strings. And it's A is the middle one. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So that kind of gives you an orientation of the harp and what's going on here. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you in this introductory lesson is that harpists play with only four fingers. We do not use the baby finger of any hand. So we might play a big arpeggio like this. But we don't, I'll do that again so that you can see my right hand. So the fifth finger will go in and out with the fourth finger. One, two, three, four. Oops, hold that one down. That's the fingering system. One, two, three, and four. And the fifth finger is not used. It's just a little bit too short to be able to reach down and not terribly strong. So it just kind of hangs out and moves around with the other finger when it comes in like this. The other thing about harp technique, which is very important, is that each finger closes all the way into the palm, like this, flat into the palm, moving from the knuckle at the top. Not moving from this knuckle, but from the knuckle at the top. And if I'm doing three fingers, that's where the third finger goes. And the thumb, which doesn't have a palm to move into, so it's a little handicapped in that respect, it is up high so that it can then move over the top of your second finger, like that. If your fingers are like this, the thumb really has nowhere to go. But if it's like this, it can get some good leverage and it has somewhere to go. If I was going to put four fingers on, the fourth, all the way into the palm, the third, the second, and the thumb. I'm doing that in reverse. That's quite a difficult exercise to do, so don't worry too much about that right now. That's just to demonstrate how the fingers actually work. So. If you do one finger at a time, doesn't matter what finger it is, it's going to come all the way in. And the thumb will always be up high. The thing about our thumbs and our fingers is that they're made to be opposing. That's what they're supposed to do. And that's what we use them for in life. That's how we've evolved. And what I'm asking you to do here is to separate them so that they're no longer opposing. Now, it's no use to you in any other aspect of life. You can't pick anything up if, if your thumb and your finger aren't meeting. And it's going to be pretty hard to do. But it's needed in order to be able to 
maximize the mechanics and the strength of your hand and your fingers in order to play the harp well and to remain relaxed while you play it. If you play like this, it's not very relaxed at all. It's that with the claw, you know, it's not relaxed. And if your thumb is low, you, it just doesn't have much power. It's not going to work very well. So uh, these mechanical things are important and you could even set up a little mirror on your music stand so that you could watch what you're doing with your fingers and then you can you can see how it's working and for the moment just test yourself to see if you can find the strings can you find all the A strings the middle of the three white strings can you find the D strings right next to C A B C D there's a low one down here You could test yourself to see uh, if you can find your way around the harp and if you can get each finger individually after you've plucked the string to close all the way in so that the fingers are flat. If you curl the finger and then close it in, you can see that it's not going to be flat. I'll do that again. And then close it in. See, it's not flat. In order to get it flat, you really have to move it kind of flip it in from that top knuckle here. Okay, well congratulations, you have made it through your first harp lesson and I look forward to seeing you soon for the next harp lesson where we'll learn to play some little pieces of music and take a look at some notes and some reading notes and figuring out how to correlate that with the strings. Alright, see you soon. Bye.